Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you back to a continuation of this series on various reasons why Jesus is superior in the Quran, in fact superior even to Muhammad. And last time we showed that the Quran actually have a, a view of high Christology concerning Christ, uh, proving that he is pre-existence, confirming what the scripture says about him in the first place. But what about Muhammad? You'll be surprised to know that actually the Quran presents the opposite when it comes to Muhammad. In fact, we are going to demonstrate to you today, myself and uh, my friend um, uh, Sam Shamoon here in studios, that Muhammad actually is an imperfect man when it comes to how the Quran actually presents him to us. So Sam, yes. um, why do you think the Quran presents Muhammad in such a fashion? Well, uh, all glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, our great God and Savior, the Father's heart who became flesh, it may be glorified in the power of the Holy Spirit. The reason why is because, quite clearly, the Quran not only says that Muhammad is a sinner who needed to confess his sins and repent, who needed his God, Allah, <clears throat> to forgive him, but you'll find all throughout the Quran that Muhammad's deity, Allah of the Quran, not the true Allah of the Holy Bible, <clears throat> threatens Muhammad repeatedly that if he doesn't get his act together, Allah will damn him, not only in this life, but in the life to come. He will actually inflict on him twice the amount of punishment in this life and the life to come if he doesn't get, him, get his act <clears throat> together. And again, I know for Muslims who are hearing this, they're going to say, you know, you're lying, you're twisting the Quran. There's nothing like that in the Quran. Well, okay, by the grace of Jesus Christ, let's read what the Quran says. All I'm going to be reading is statements from the Quran to show you what your own scripture says about Muhammad being an imperfect, capricious, immoral, <clears throat> double-minded, sinful transgressor. Right? Um, all these <laughs> mouthful of things. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, let's start with chapter 4, verse 106 to 107. Which people can see, by the way. 4, 106, 107, and seek forgiveness of Allah. So notice right away, Muhammad's God tells him, seek forgiveness of Allah. Lo, Allah is ever forgiving, merciful, and plead not on behalf of people who deceive themselves. So Muhammad, don't be pleading on behalf of deceivers. Don't do that. That's sinful. Ask Allah to forgive you for doing that. Lo, Allah loveth not one who is treacherous and sinful. What about chapter 9, verse 43 of the Quran? It's just reading what the Quran says, taking it at face value, not explaining it away like some of the ulama, the Muslim scholars, <clears throat> are wont to do. Chapter 9, verse 43. Allah forgive thee, O Muhammad. Notice it even begins by saying, Allah forgive thee, O Muhammad. Now I challenge the Muslims. Show me a similar statement in the Quran where Allah says that to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Where Allah says to Jesus, Allah forgive you, Jesus. Seek forgiveness of Allah, Jesus, you won't find it. <clears throat> Allah forgive thee, O Muhammad, wherefore did you, didst thou, grant them leave, ere those who told the truth were manifest to thee, and thou didst not know the liars. Why did you grant them leave until those who spoke the truth was made clear to you from those who are liars? What about chapter 10, verse 94, to show you that Muhammad was double-minded, capricious, that he himself had doubts whether these were revelations from the true God, and he was right to doubt that that fact because these revelations clearly did not come from the true God. Chapter 10 verse 94 of the Quran, and if thou Muhammad art in doubt, if you are in doubt concerning that which we reveal unto thee, then question those who read the scripture that was before thee. If you want to swage your doubts, if you want to convince yourself, these are revelations from the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, ask those who've been reading the book, the Kitab, the Bible, before this revelation came to you. Ask the Jews and Christians, well, I'll tell you what, Al, if a Muslim were to come to me and tell me, hey, you know what? I'm starting to doubt whether these revelations given to my prophet Muhammad are from God. And here the Quran told my prophet to check with the Jews and Christians and their scripture right. to confirm whether he's a prophet. So I'm going to do likewise. I'm going to ask you, you are someone who's been reading the Bible, the Bible that came before the Quran. What say you? Are these revelations from God? Most definitely, these revelations are not from the true God. These revelations are satanic <clears throat> deception, where Muhammad was deceived by the angel of light, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, into thinking he's a prophet of the true God, because these revelations contradict the book that came before it, the Holy Bible. Now, let me continue. 
And I like what you mentioned. You know, uh, people wonder why, why did Muhammad do what he did? Well, he was deceived. Yes. No doubt about it. No, definitely, because the Bible is quite clear. In 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, Satan will appear as a being of light, angel of light, in order to deceive people into thinking that they are prophets or messengers sent by the true God. And so we need to do what even Muhammad said. Now, here Muhammad is right, because the Bible does confirm that if someone comes preaching a message of revelation that he says is from the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that message must be consistent with that which came before it, the Holy Bible. When we examine Muhammad's revelations, we see that he contradicts the Bible. Therefore, he was deceived. He is a false prophet, and he had every reason to doubt these revelations. Now, for the sake of time, let me continue a little further. Verily, the truth from thy Lord hath come unto thee, so be not thou of the waverers. Now, this next one is quite troubling for Muslims. Chapter 17, verses 73 to 75. Chapter 17, verses 73 to 75. And they indeed strove hard to beguile thee. They tried hard to deceive you, Muhammad, away from that wherewith we have inspired thee, that thou, you, should invent other than, than it against us. In other words, what it's saying is, the unbelievers wanted Muhammad to come up with a revelation that agreed with their desires, revelations praising their gods and goddesses, right. which would have gone against what he was teaching up to that time. So what does his Lord, his God, tell him? And then would they have accepted you as a friend? And if we had not made thee holy firm, if we didn't strengthen you, thou mightest, you would have inclined unto them a little. In other words, here, even Muhammad's God is saying, if we didn't strengthen you, you're about to give in and acquiesce to their dem demands and praise their gods if we didn't give you the strength not to give in. Can you imagine something similar said about Jesus Christ? where the father says to Jesus, Son, had I not strengthened you, you would have gave in to their demands, and you would have acqu acquiesced and tickled their ears, and then, this is what I've done to you, son, because notice what Muhammad's Lord says to him. Then had we made ye, then we would have made you a double punishment of living, taste double punishment here in this life, that's what it means, and double punishment of dying, and then would have punished you twice, twice as bad as an, someone else, in the afterlife, then hadst thou found no helper against us. Wow. What yeah, a uh, troubling message. Encouraging by threats. Yes. And then a yeah. couple more for the sake of time. Chapter 40, verse 55. Chapter 40, verse 55. Then have patience, O Muhammad. Lo, <clears throat> the promise of Allah is true. And ask forgiveness of thy sin. Ask Allah to forgive you of your sin. And him the praise of thy Lord at fall of night and the early hours. 41 verse 6, 41 verse 6, say unto them, O Muhammad, I'm only a mortal like you. I'm only a man, a mortal like you. It is inspired in me that your God is one God. Therefore, take the straight path unto him and seek forgiveness of him and woe unto the idolaters. Two more, 46 verse 9 of the Quran, 46 verse 9 of the Quran, say, I am no new thing among the messengers of Allah, nor know I what will be done with me or with you. I do but follow that which is inspired in me, and I'm but a plain warner. This Can is one you imagine? of my favorite ones. Can you imagine Jesus saying, yeah. hey, followers, I don't know what the Father is going to do with me or with you. But I'm, follow me. Just I'm inspired. Just follow me. Even though I don't know what the Father will do to me and you. Yeah. And they, then they want us to believe that this man is the greatest of all human beings, an example to follow and emulate the leader of all messengers. Finally, this one should trouble the Muslims even more than what I've read thus far. 69, 44 to 47. 69, verses 44 to 47. And if we had, if he had, Muhammad, not we, if he had invented false sayings concerning us, we assuredly had taken him by the right hand and then severed his life aorta, and not one of you could have held us off from him. Now imagine the father threatening Jesus this way. If the Lord Jesus, my son, had said something contrary to what I inspired him to say, then I would have grabbed him by the right hand and cut off his life vein, and there would be no one to stop me from killing my son. This is uh, Allah, ar rahman ar rahim right? Saying it to Muhammad. And you know what's yeah. tragic for Muslims? He according, died this way, right? According to the sound traditions, Muhammad died from the harmful effects of the poisonous sheep that a Jewish woman fed him. And he said, I feel like my aorta being cut off from the poison of that, his own words. I feel my aorta, my life being cut off from the poison, and he died because of it. 
which means that according to the Quran, Muhammad died the death of someone accursed, hated by Allah, abandoned by Allah, condemned by Allah to hell. Well, what can we say about this? Not much. Can't say so, much. Um, now that we have demonstrated already uh, the superiority of Christ just with these four reasons, what's left, brother, uh, oh. at least for next time? We have more because we're going to see that Jesus Christ is not only the pre-existent divine word who came forth as spirit to become flesh and conscious Muhammad is a sinner, but Jesus is co-creator, life giver with Allah. He creates and gives life exactly the same way that the Muslim deity does, unlike Muhammad who couldn't do a single miracle. Right. Amen to that. Well, folks, uh, hopefully you've been enjoying the series. As always, we encourage you, of course, to share it uh, on your platforms, share it with friends, share it with others. And uh, as we have demonstrated to you so far, Jesus indeed, according to the Quran, is superior to Muhammad. So maybe that will be a way to build a bridge for our Muslim friends to go back now to the gospel or the Bible in general and see why Jesus indeed is superior and the Quran couldn't do anything other than to affirm what the Word of God has stated. Until we meet you again next time, have a blessed day. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. We can't make these quality videos without the help of partners like you. So please consider becoming a Patreon supporter today at patreon.com forward slash Sierra International. I want to make sure you always get notified when we release a new video. So please click the bell to be notified and of course, make sure to subscribe to this channel. If this video was helpful to you, please click the thumbs up. Thank you.